and this was a more professional situation of yeah. the power wall is on time and uh, um, we gonna kiss all the babies in the room. It's a thousand people in there. It's gonna be a thousand autographs. We're gonna be there extra three hours. And I just learned a lot about being on time. You know, sitting up straight, smart, doing it. Things that me coming from being SUC and just being gangster in the hood and getting this money and being a legend. But this was a more professional side to get me ready. And it was a one album deal, and we got it done, and it, it gave me the legs and the foundation to be who I am today. And boys wanna hate. I chunk up the deuce for the Let's talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. So. You was in you you live both worlds. You signed to Swisher House. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that going from SUC to Swisher? Live both movements. How did you how did you end up like like how what I know it was a move on, but like was it big to you that you moved to Swisher House or signing with me because y'all killed it when you did? But that was a business decision. Okay, that most people can't make. I was more enshrined in what I was doing. I was a part of the screwed up clique, but right at that time, I had a legal situation, a bad legal situation that I needed to get past. But besides the legal situation, we wasn't in favor at the time. What I mean by that is, you know, Pat had to pass away, Screw passed away, this going on. We kind of in a situation of trying to fight back to just to keep our name good mm -hmm. as far as SUC and what we've been doing as music because I didn't drop tapes Hawked and dropped them we just kind of added what we're about to do they kind of at the rise they were steady reaching out to me to get a deal done I knew that this was going to be a big decision based on the side of town I was from and the main reason that I made the decision that I knew that I had the talent to take care of it and, it, and that they were pushing our type of music doing what we do what we made what we built the city I just felt like I needed to take the opportunity for the win that they just kept on asking. And I knew that it would be something. I didn't actually sign with Swisher House. Okay. Me and T. Ferris done a deal, and T. Okay. Ferris was a part of Swisher House. Okay. And and I wouldn't take it back for nothing in the world, you know what I'm saying? But I really feel like I knew this. I was like, man, it's going to be a lot of criticism for this. It's going to be what's the best thing for me to be able to get out of it. I got to go hard. So I got to come with this chunk of the dudes. I got to come with this I'm a G. I got to come love by a few, aided by men. I got to come ABA. I got to come gangster grill. And I got to give it to them. So I don't think if my it, it wouldn't have went over well if I would have flopped with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just knew that I had to work hard. It was a great opportunity. And I wouldn't give it back to, for nothing. Power Wild, I learned a lot from um, going on the road with Power Wild. I learned a lot from just having a new day. I, I was from being drinking and smoking and Missing shows and tired and not a, and this was a more professional situation of yeah. the power wall is on time and uh, um, we gonna kiss all the babies in the room. It's a thousand people in there. It's gonna be a thousand autographs. We're gonna be there extra three hours and I just learned a lot about being on time. You know, sitting up straight, smart, doing it things that me coming from being SUC and just being gangster in the hood and getting this money and being a legend, but this was a more professional side to get me ready. And it was a one album deal and we got it done and it, it gave me the legs and the foundation to be who I am today. Did yeah. you learn by seeing or did you learn by him actually telling you those stuff? No, I learned by seeing. By seeing. I learned by seeing Power Wall is very, very humble. You know, when I was in situations and got in trouble and had to come home and um he was doing he was at it was at points where he was twenty five thousand a show and he was splitting it with me. You know, to, and me, letting me do chunk up the dudes at his big shows and everything, and really doing not only just me being his favorite rapper, but you know, reaching back. And he had he had no reason to do this. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate the Switch House thing was a was a was a great moment in my career, even mm -hmm. though it was controversial. It did a lot for me as a person on, you know, from a, a learning standpoint a and mm -hmm. and learning how to admire other people that and I went over there and did my thing. Mike Jones was platinum power mm -hmm. wall was this and such such. I just knew that I was gonna come over there and tear that microphone up. <laughs> oh, all right, I, yeah, I you seen it. I, and, I seen it, and I, I remember that was, that was on my mind. Go hard, go hard, go hard. And I started with that ABA, and we hit them with that ABA, and it, it kind of took me back to the mixtape feel. That's what they kind of wanted. They hadn't seen the mixtape Kiki. Because so, that's kind of what happened with us. When we let the mixtape game go and we start doing Platinum in the Ghettos and, and Hardest Pits in the Litter and, and Big Mo, we kind of left the screw tape game alone. We stopped doing the mixtapes and they pick right up on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They pick right up on it. So when I got over that, one of the first things they wanted to do was put me back in that element right. of freestyling it. And we hit it big. We hit it big on ABA, man, just to be honest. It was bigger than love by a few hated by me. Oh yeah, she, man. I, the impact of ABA was legendary. Chunk up the deuce really is on that album. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because 
we hadn't got that clear yet. We really hadn't got the deal for me yet. See, it's so many stuff going there. Mike Jones had a deal over here. Paul Wall had a deal over here. They was trying to get me a different deal. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going through um, Asylum and Warner Brothers, they wanted to give me a different deal. So we went through Universal. But that was a transition. I had to go do some time in that. In that. That's why I missed the Break Em Out video. I had situations. So it took a lot. And I really commend Swish House for what they done of taking on me because I brought a lot of baggage. I came over there with a warrant, wanted. I had baggage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get it, man. And, and, but, I didn't, but me being a G, I didn't take a dollar up front. Yeah. These people were platinum, yeah. millions. Yeah. All I wanted was an opportunity. All I wanted was Gangster Grill, uh, ABA, I'm a G, chunk up the dudes. And I knew that that would give me a platform. When I first got there, man, I was at, I had back down, back down to $5 a shot. I chunk up the deuce for the south and the north. Boys talking down and